Hey folks, welcome to ADSR. I'm Steven Ellistad. Make sure you subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel and follow on social media. Over the last couple tutorials, I've been taking a look at Substance by Output. It's a really cool new contact-based instrument from Output that lets you create multiple layers of sample-based patches, layer them and blend them together, and have all kinds of different points of control. And in the first one, we had kind of taken a look at just the basic interface, and I walked through a couple things. Um, in the second one, we looked a little bit at modulation and how the macros work. And in the third one, we kind of tackled the rhythm section. So all these are different layers and ways of working with substance. And I really like to approach, you know, my sound design in this depending on, I think, and what am I trying to do? Am I trying to go after something with a lot of movement or motion? Am I trying to add a, a bottom end? Am I looking for something that I have a lot of dynamic control over? And that kind of informs how I go about designing this sound. It's the same way I approach something in, say, Scanner XT or Form is a great example of that because there's so many different ways that we can approach the process of building up a sound. So in this one, I've got a clean, initialized version of Substance running inside of Control. What I wanted to do in this one is kind of take a little bit more of a look at the arpeggiator in Substance. And so, as always, we've got three different layers that we can assign uh, tone to, and each of these is in a bank. This is a bank of subs, a bank of simple synths, uh, bass guitars, and we can click any of these and choose a different level. So we have our simple synths, organic hybrids, there's some really cool stuff in there. In fact, why don't we start with just one at a time, and let's think about the front end of our sound. Right now we've got a clean sub in there. I think that's a pretty cool starting point. But then over here, organic hybrids. It's kind of neat. I'm going to go back to this one, however you pronounce it. Kind of like that. And I think for this one, what are we going to bring into here? Um, low brass process bass guitars, what do we have? So let's go ahead and solo this guy out and see what kind of tones we're working with. That's a pretty cool tone, but I think we can find something with a little more character. It's got a little bit of an envelope and a format shifting thing going on. I think that's a great third third level there. Let's turn them all on and see what we got. I think we're cool with the sub for right now, but there's definitely some kind of tonal mismatch between these two. So let's let's dive into our edit window and see what we got here. We'll turn off that sub for a moment. I'm not really a fan of that starting tonality, so I'm just going to... Just kind of delaying that a little bit. I'm going to open this up to a stereo as well. And I'll bring this back. And I think I was probably okay back where I was, so I'm just going to command click that back to its normal setting. I kind of like that, but I think I want to bring this guy down a little bit. Bring that sub back in. Let's see what we got. So 
So pretty cool stuff there. But let's look at getting some arpeggiator stuff in here. We can turn this arpeggiator on, and now we can work from a bunch of different options. So here's that bass tone again, without any arpeggiator functions on. I just saved it as a preset. And one thing that I've noticed that occasionally the arpeggiator in particular gets a little funky, and you just want to make sure that you save your preset, especially uh, as just an editor variation or something like that, which is what I've done here. I call this a dark motion bass, and then I have a different one with the dark motion bass. And because this is NKS, I can put it into my favorites, so it'll be showing up in my complete control. So a lot of cool stuff we can do there. But what we're looking at here is the arpeggiator. So here's that tone with that again. And we turn this on, we can choose first the type of motion, we have this visual representation of what's happening, but also this pattern. And so we can choose simple syncopated or triplet patterns. So right now I'm at 130 second notes. You can kind of see how there has a 32 step pattern in one octave, two octaves, etc. At any time I can reverse it as well. Cool stuff there, especially when we start getting syncopated. So maybe we'll come down to uh, how about a dotted 16. Cool, so we got our arpeggio. Now we can lay that into our rhythm as well. Because remember, we also have this step sequencer in here, which we can choose our step pattern. Whether it's in a different time or what have you. So some pretty interesting things there. Now we can send them. So we can hear our rhythm rate is moving the layer of this, this patch here. Let's turn these guys off. A lot of fun stuff there, especially again, we combine it with that arpeggiator and find a cool motion. And then we can, of course, come over into our rhythm section, just like we did in the last video, and we can then start assigning those to some of those macros. So we'll put that on cutoff there. We'll put that on macro two. So we'll just need to switch over there. Macro 2 is assigned, and now if we come over to our main page, so Macro 2, give those a couple names. So we can see what's happening on each of those. So this is our cutoff. Just our zero point or our default setting. So we got this arpeggiator working along with that motion. We've got them assigned to macros. So a lot of really fun things we can do there. So. Hopefully I give you some pretty cool ideas of ways we can shape tone and manipulate things on multiple levels inside of Substance by Output. I'm Stephen Ellens for ADSR. Thanks for checking this out. Make sure you subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel, follow on social media, and we'll see you next time.